Hey, this is Chris with Chris Owens Golf Fitness. I'd like for you uh, to talk a little bit today about the downswing. And there's no right way or wrong way to do a downswing. I mean, there's going to be a hundred different ways. Uh, a lot of the pros are going to be listening and, and saying, you know, everybody has their opinion on the golf swing. There's three things I don't talk about, golf, religion, and politics. Because usually whoever's talking is usually right. So this is just something that I give my clients to help them think about the downswing. And unfortunately, a lot of people come over the top in the golf swing. Now, it's been mentioned a couple of times that the reason people come over the top in the downswing is because a lot of people are right side dominant. Well, if we understand physical literacy, and if we understand from Ishbam Bali from Hungary, and you understand fundamental movement patterns, fundamental sports skills, physical literacy, and if you don't, let me just kind of back it up and tell you about it. <clears throat> Fundamental movement patterns, by the age of 12, you should master hopping, skipping, running, jumping, throwing, catching, bounding. That transfers into a sports skill. So if I can throw, I can throw a football, a baseball, a rock, a javelin. So from a physical literacy standpoint, if I can throw, I understand how to store energy, release energy, ground force trash, and kinematic sequence. So if I never learned how to throw over here, it's hard for me to be able to store energy and develop power over here. So most sports that we play and uh, most people are hit baseball and do everything from the right side, meaning they're doing everything from the right side in this position here. So I, I hear, I've heard it a couple of times that people that are uh, hit from the right side are the right side dominant. Now physical literacy will tell you that most sports if you hit from the right side, that you're gonna be power left. Meaning, if I was playing baseball, my normal reaction is going to basically be hit power left, which is over third base, or in between third base and short top, shortstop. Power right is more of a, a weak hit. Uh, most people bunt to the right. So when I play tennis, I can serve and I can hit it a lot faster to the left than I can to the right. Does that make sense? So guess how that transfers in the golf swing? So if I'm power left in most sports, I'm gonna be power left in golf. So when we set up to the golf ball, we're gonna basically go to the top and our first move is gonna be power left because we're trying to get over here. In fact, I heard it from a, a cricket player. Cricket, a lot of pros don't, a lot of guys, it's hard for them to transfer, to teach somebody cricket into golf. But if you understand physical literacy, it's pretty easy. Cricket is power left. That is their power side. Weak right is a move that they don't use that often. So. If you would teach your cricket players, if they're used to going power left, they'll be coming over the top going power left. Teach them how to swing weak right, and it makes a lot more sense. Baseball, instead of hitting power left, have them hit weak right. Now, I like to have a clock. Everyone learns differently. So the skill is the golf swing is never left. The golf swing is actually right. So if we look at plane, this is plane, this is plane, this is plane, that is plane, not that. Hope that makes sense. Now, that's the skill. The drill, there can be 50,000 drills and your body and your mind's gonna get one of them. But I wanna just use a drill <clears throat> uh, from a number standpoint. And let's say we're in a clock and this clock sits down on me like this, and I'm in the middle of the clock, and this is the ball, and this is 12, this is six, this is three, and this is nine. So don't look at my numbers. Think about being in a clock, again, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, from the ball. So 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock. So I asked my guys, look, 
On the downswing, I would like for you to exit to one o'clock. So when they come to the top, I'd like for them to basically move and exit to one o'clock. Most guys exit to 11 o'clock. So irons, I can see my ankles, exit one o'clock, driver three, one, 18, it's a longer club. I asked my guys to, to exit actually to two o'clock or three o'clock. Now, how do we transfer that from the gym to the course? So when you get in your free motion machine and you grab the free motion machine, again, the numbers are still there. 12, six, three, nine. And I'm gonna put it here, I'm gonna turn, chin ho, and I'm gonna exit to one o'clock. So again, I don't wanna exit to 11.30 or 11, I'm gonna exit to one o'clock. So at the gym, when you work on your free motion machine, I'm still working core, but I'm gonna exit one o'clock versus 11 o'clock driver, I'm going to try to exit to two or three o'clock irons. I'm going to exit to one o'clock. So I kind of hope that helps you. If you have a tendency to be coming over the top or slicing the ball, I'm hoping that understanding number one, it's normal to think about going power left because that is our power left side in most any sport, hitting the baseball, tennis, cricket, whichever one it's going to be. So hopefully that helps you to basically take it and also use the free motion machine on your downswing. Think about also going to one o'clock versus the other clock. So Chris Ombi, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, ring the bell, hit the subscribe button. If you do like the video, tell me what you liked about it. If you don't like the video, tell me what you didn't like about it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. So again, Chris Ombi, Chris Ombi.